Yo, what is going on, guys? It is your boy Tyler Mask, aka Tyler Coon Williams, aka Tyler Suplex, aka the one who lived. And welcome back, back, back to the Tyler Mask Patreon page. If you're watching this on Patreon a day early, or if you're watching this on the Tyler Coon Williams channel on Thursday as a dual review of both nights of uh, New Beginning of Hiroshima. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, and welcome back to another New Japan Pro Wrestling review. If you watch this on Patreon, this is the first time I've done a New Japan Pro Wrestling review, probably since Wrestle Kingdom. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then this is your first time watching me review New Japan since September, since the G1 Climax. So that was the last time I actually did New Japan content before TBSI went and nuked my entire channel. Uh, well, I mean, they nuked my channel beforehand, but then I got it back, and then they nuked it again. I know you're probably all asking, why are you talking about New Japan on your channel again? I thought you were never going to talk about it ever again. Yes, uh, that was the original plan. I was never going to talk about New Japan on this channel ever again. But, uh, after considering things and, you know, looking at the way my channel is right now, how my Patreon's going, I thought it was better for my brand to talk about New Japan on the YouTube channel. And mainly for this reason. Uh, well, I guess two reasons. Number one, uh, as you guys know, I like to give a big fuck you to TVSI because they took down my channel for talking about their product. So I said, hey, why don't I continue to talk about their product and they can't do shit about it? So it's a bit of a fuck you to them. And well, I guess the second reason would be that you guys actually like me reviewing New Japan, and it's a bit of a disservice to you guys that I decide not to because of what happened. Now, obviously, you guys understand why I don't do it anymore, but gotta get the people what they want. And, you know, my channel being gone for so long, it is still kind of recovering. It hasn't really fully recovered from the state it once was, but, you know, the recovery stage is it's in right now i feel like reviewing new japan probably would be a good thing for the channel so so this is the first new japan pro wrestling review we're doing on this channel please hit the like button if the video does very well with the likes then we might consider doing more down the line this is just a one-time run to see how it does so new japan pro wrestling got off of wrestle kingdom a month ago and usually at the wrestle kingdom is their new beginning series which is really i would say Wrestle Kingdom is WrestleMania. This is almost the restart for them. If Wrestle Kingdom is WrestleMania, then this is like Extreme Rules. I, that's a horrible analogy, but you know what I mean. This is the new beginning. It's a new start to New Japan going into the new year. So that's how I can phrase that. And usually they have the Road 2 tour building up to this. Now, in years past, they usually do two new beginning shows. They do, uh, I don't know, what, let's say they do one in Sapporo, which usually they have been doing. And then I'll do one in Osaka. This year, they did one in Nagoya, and then they did two in Hiroshima. Now, I believe they may have done that because of the COVID thing going on. They couldn't do the Osaka and Sapporo shows. I don't know why. I don't know how. I'm just assuming it's because of COVID. But we got three new beginning shows out of it, so one could assume we're getting three great shows, right? E. So, if you guys watched my live stream for a new beginning in Nagoya, I thought the show was... Okay, like, the main event was great. Shingo Takagi versus Hiroshi Tanashi was an absolutely great match. You could even say outstanding match. But there was nothing else about the show that was really worth watching, you know? So I figure going into Hiroshima, which usually, I guess, will replace their Osaka show, which is normally their big, big shows, this will be a bit of a step up from Nagoya. I would honestly say this show was probably worse than the show in Nagoya, just to be frank with you. I thought this show was kind of it. It was it. But that being said, let's get straight into the show. Why I thought it was it. The first match we had in here was the team of the Young Lions, Yoda Suji, Yu Yamura, and Gabriel Kid versus Yoshinobu Kanimaro, El Desperado, and Minoru Suzuki. This honestly and truly was like probably the best match on the show. It's a far stretch. Most of you probably won't agree, but this was either like the best or maybe second best match on the show i like the dynamic of all the young lions just trying to beat up on minoru suzuki it's like minoru suzuki was this one big bully and then like all the nerds banded together to beat this guy up it was so fun uh it was basically like seven minutes into the match where you just had all the young lions in the ring kicking and booting koda uh koda uh minoru suzuki on the ground then it would get him up and they would all do running clotheslines to him and minoru suzuki ended up fighting them off and then 
he ended up beating down Yuya Moro, who was the most... Yuya led the pack, I would say, because Yuya and Minoru Suzuki have had this very odd relationship for, like, really the last year, ever since the New Japan Cup, where Yuya... It's like teacher-student, but the student hates the teacher. He resents the teacher. He does not like Minoru Suzuki. He really, really badly wants to get a singles match with him, but because he's a young lion, it obviously is not going to happen. Now, New Japan has done... Young Lion singles matches before. We've seen this in New Japan Cup 2019 with Tanahashi versus Shota Unimo. We've seen this before with the likes of Carl Fredericks and, you know, Kenta was going to be in New Japan Cup last year before the original New Japan Cup got canceled. It's happened before. Going into this year's New Japan Cup, I wouldn't mind seeing a Yuyamura versus Minoru Suzuki match. I would actually endorse it and I actually want to see it. Um, so I hope that's where they're going with this. Uh, Yuya Mora did end up getting locked in a high angle, uh, single leg boss to crab by Minoru Suzuki and got tapped out. So Suzuki Goon won this match. Like I said, I thought it was a, it was, it was good for what it was. It wasn't anything overly special. Nothing you gotta go out of your way to see. But if most of the times a lot of people tend to skip out on the Young Lion matches, I would say give this one a watch. Like, I think you'll honestly enjoy it. I would give it a solid six out of 10. You know what? Six and a half out of ten. Six and a half out of ten. Next match we had in here was Master Wado versus Bushi. This was uh, one of the two singles matches on this show. And honestly and truly, it's pretty crazy thinking that the only two singles matches on the show were Young Lion matches. Oh, oh, that's an insult. Were uh, junior heavyweight matches. I'm so sorry. I'm used to Master Wado being a Young Lion. Um, speaking of Master Wado, let me just say, if I haven't said this already, I love the new version of master wado we got like the version of master wado when he first debuted in new japan cup last year when he was like i call him the blueberry what i used to call him the blue what did i call, used to call him i think i called him the blueberry uh, oompa loompa because he, he looked like a he looked like a blueberry oompa loompa he had the the blue hair he had the blue pants he might as well just came out saying augustus gloop augustus gloop he might as well came out saying that that's how he looked he looked so awkward so rigid in the ring he was okay but you could tell he was obviously still very nervous um now he comes out he's way more confident he looks a lot more like heavy stacked he doesn't look bigger but he's you know a lot more toned now his hair is a darker shade of blue it's it's kind of I don't want to call it the, the the emo show hair, but he has like the, you know the hair draped over his eyes a little bit. It looks kind of edgy. He has like these these uh he still has the flares, but like they're darker blue flares. Like he looks like a set wrestler now, and not that he didn't look like a wrestler before, but he looks like an like a better version of one. He actually looks like a viable threat for a title because at first he looked like a whole comedy joke. That's how he looked. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not trying to be mean, but Master in the beginning did not look like somebody I want to take seriously. This guy right here, I could take this seriously. Now, maybe drop Master from his name and just call him Watto or call him, I don't know what you want to call him, but Master Watto still doesn't click for me. But overall, I like his look now. Uh, the match itself was, this is also, I would say, a little bit below good. Not necessarily decent because i would be doing it an injustice but it was somewhere in between that line i thought bushi master Wado had really good chemistry in here well i guess good chemistry in here um there was this really really cool move was i don't know if it was bushi i'm trying to remember was it bushi or master Wado that did it i think it was bushi that did it um bushi was actually targeting the leg of master Wado during this match which was kind of weird because master Wado clearly forgot to sell a lot of times because master Wado, he's master Wado. he does kicks and strikes and you know emulating that karate kid type of you know move set so a lot of the moves he does are kicks so when master Wado is having his leg targeted you'd expect him to sell the leg but no he would kick bushi and then it's like i thought I thought your leg hurt, but then he would go in and sell it when Bushi targeted the leg, but then he would go back to kicking Bushi, and it's like, okay, well, I guess your leg don't hurt that much. Anyway, <clears throat> one really cool spot here was when he caught a Mastuato mid-leg kick, threw it into, like, the rope, and then hit the MX, which is his code breaker, which I thought was pretty cool. After that, like a minute or so after, Bushi, I don't know how to explain this move, and this is why TBSI fucking sucks, because I would show you guys the move as like a gif or something, and I'm not even going to dare do that because I don't want them to come after me. So you just going to have to imagine it or go to the show and watch it yourself, and you know what I'm talking about. But there's this one spot 
where Bushi does this, like, he grabs Master Wado by his legs. Like, you know, Master Wado does, like, the inverted standing crucifix pin, which I love so much. It should be his finisher. Bushi does, like, an inverted version of that, where it's almost like he rolls, but he may... I have zero clue how to explain this move without it sounding ridiculous, but it was cool. Go watch this match just for the move. It was cool, but it didn't get the pin, so I was a little upset. He ended up in the MX afterwards, the mid-rope MX, on to Master Wado and got the pin. Bushi, the winner of this match. I mean, I'm not mad that Bushi won. It it doesn't bug me at all. I mean, we're heading into BOS. I don't know if we're heading into BOSJ again this year because we just got BOSJ in November. I don't know if they're going to do BOSJ in, in April. I, they Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Uh, but if we're heading into BOSJ, this is a good way to you know get them up there. If not, then... Maybe they just want to make Bushi look credible because the guy gets pinned all the fucking time. But I don't think this loss hurts Master Wado at all. He'll be fine. He'll recuperate. But Bushi won this match. Six out of ten for me. Waiting to get to the next match. Going to look at over here just to make sure I get all the names right. We had Yujiro Takahashi, El Fantasmo, Taiji Shimori, Evil, and Jay White versus Toriano, Yoshihashi, Hiroki Goto, Tomorishi, and Kazuchika Okada. Five on five tag team match. As you guys know, I am not really a big fan of the whole five on five, six on six, seven on seven tag team matches. Once you exceed three on three, it gets a little tedious to me unless it's like an elimination tag. And even that sometimes can get a bit like, I'd rather you just keep it to six or four men in the ring at a time. It was... It was your typical New Japan tag match. Everybody got in, got their moves, went up against everybody you expect them to go up against. Ishii went after Jay White. Okada went after Evil. ELPP and Taiji went after the uh, junior tag side on uh, Chaos, which what didn't exist, which was basically just Goto and Yoshihashi. And then you had Yujiro and Yano in there going at each other. And I would dare say Yujiro and Yano was probably the most entertaining part of the of this match whenever they got into the room with each other you had yano doing his shtick which can be redundant at this point i think if you've been watching yano for years you know what he's going to do but he's found a way to get a kick out of me every single time so i don't mind it all too much so he went after um yujiro in this match and towards the end you had like all the bull club except for jay white and evil going after yano and he kept on fighting them all off which i thought was really funny uh jato or ghetto tried to get on the rope tried to distract them uh, but it led to Yujiro getting rolled up by Yano, and he got the pin for Chaos. So Chaos wins this match, going into the new beginning at Hiroshima Night 2, and then I'm assuming Castle Attack, where we're getting the matches. But they got the win, so Chaos looks, they look strong going into those shows. I will give this 6 out of 10, nothing you got to go away to see, it was alright. Then we get into the next match, Tomi Okiyoma, backtrack. Then we get into the next match. Hey, look at Toma! And God himself, Kota Bushi, versus the team of Sonata and Tetsuya Naito. Uh, this match was also fairly good. I think that we see, if you watch the new beginning, like the Road 2 shows, you feel like you've seen these matches so many different times and so many different iterations of the match that after a while, you're kind of desensitized to what they're going to do. You're like, mm, well, I've seen a lot of these spots already. It's whatever, whatever. What I can say is if there's one enjoyable thing about this match, it's the very many few going on between uh, Tomoki Omna and Tetsuya Naito. It is just so much fun seeing Homa go in there with Naito, try to hold up with this younger talent. I say younger as if Naito isn't only younger by six years, but hang in there with Naito. And I say hang in there. Homa's 44, which isn't young anymore, but like there's plenty of guys in their 40s and 50s who could still go. But Homa, for some reason, like he just isn't good. Like I don't know what it is about Homa now. I've seen good Homa matches, like Homa versus Ishii from 2015, Homa versus Shibata from 2015, I've seen Homa versus, uh, I think, Makabe and Homa versus, I've seen some good Homa matches from, like, mid-2010s that were good, even early 2010s, but, like, Homa now, it's just, like, I don't know, he's just there to lose, that's all Homa's purpose is right now, he's there to lose, but having him come in here... And actually have a storyline. Even if just the minuscule one with Naito is just interesting to me. Uh, I'm going to assume we're leading to a singles match, a castle attack. Because if not, then I don't know what the purpose of this is. Um, I mean, obviously, Naito isn't benefiting at all from feuding with Oma. It would be Homa benefiting because he's the lower tier guy at this point. New Japan dad, but still kind of lower tier. 
Uh, then you have, of course, Ibushi and Sonata have a match tomorrow. That is going to be good, I hope. I mean, the last match they had was very, very long, and I barely remember it, but hopefully that match will be good. Um, like I said, I think this was nothing to brag home about. It was Knights who got the win over Tomoko Yomna with the Destino for the pin. So we get the win for LIJ. So then we get into the latter half of the show. The, the co-main event. and the main, All right, I'm going to say this right here. Um, everything after this point, you, you really don't have to watch it. I'll be honest with you. I didn't really like anything about the latter half of the show. The main event, I'll talk about it in a second. But this match right here. This was, this was, this was, this existed without my consent, and I can't believe it happened. We had the team of the Dangerous Techers in Zack Sabre Jr. and Taichi versus Tama Tonga and Tongaloa. Now, they've had matches in the past before, and those matches were either good or, like, decent. And I thought the Wrestle Kingdom match they had was good. Most people would disagree with me, but I actually liked the Wrestle Kingdom match that they had. This match... I don't know who was smoking when they decided that 30 minutes was appropriate time for this match to go, but I need them to lay off the crack pipe next time because this match was unnecessarily long, like butt-ass unnecessarily long. This match was legitimately 29 minutes and something seconds, and it felt every bit of 29 minutes and something seconds. Now, we've I've seen a Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. 29 minute match. Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. versus Kota Bushi and Tanahashi from Dominion last year. That was a really good match. So it's not like these two guys are incapable of having that. Tomatong and Tongalo, on the other hand, I love them to death. But I don't want to put them in the ring for that long because when you stretch out their matches. It really feels like it's plotting. And it really gets slow. And it doesn't get too interesting. Love them to death once again. But don't like seeing them in matches over 20 minutes. Singles or tag. So, <clears throat> in the very beginning of this match. Tama, like, entrances. Tama Tong comes out with this trash bag full of brown paper bags. And I'm like, this is odd. Now, I don't watch all the Road 2 shows. So, maybe I'm missing the context here. But I'll play along. He comes out to the ring. He throws it into the ring. Bell rings. He's taking out these items. It's like a tennis, ten, not tennis ball racket. He takes out this like um, table tennis packet. He takes out this mask. He takes out all this stuff. He takes out this. He takes out that. And it's like, okay, this is comedy. And then Tai Chi and Zach Jr. reacting to it throughout the match. And I think part of the match, part of the reason why I want this match is that it was so, didn't know what it wanted to be. It didn't know if it wanted to be comedy. And then it wanted to be serious at some times. And it's like, you can't do both. You got to be either comedy or you want to be serious. If you want to do a perfect blend, you got to find a medium. And there was no medium. Sometimes it was like, yeah, and then they wanted to actually wrestle. And then they went back to the comedy and then they stopped. And it's like, make up your fucking mind. And then you got to like that 20 minute mark. And it's like, it should be ending at this point. But then it feels like there's no one in sight. And it's like, well, what the fuck's going on? Then they said 25 minutes pass, and I'm like, this match is still going on at 25 minutes. Are we fucking serious now? And <clears throat> the story of this match, so you guys most likely know this story. If you don't know this story, then uh, Tai Chi carries this iron glove to the ring. This iron glove came from a former member of Suzuki Yu and Takashi Iska, who retired in 2019. Once he retired, Tai Chi took control of the glove. Basically, the storyline is based off the fact that Tama Tonga and Tonga Love have been trying to fuck with the Dangerous Techers by taking Iska's glove away from Taichi. So, Jado comes down to the ring with the glove. He goes into the ring, tries to hit Taichi with it. He ducks. They get control of it. They try to hit, you know, Tama Tonga with it, but the referee wakes up. The next three minutes is just a big scuffle between G.O.D., Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa. Then you have them in the ring then you have um <clears throat> zach saber jr and taichi trying to get into the mix trying to get the glove back then they can't get it then jado gets in the ring then doki gets in the ring it is just a big mishmash of let's do everything we can throw all the the smoke and mirrors and the plunder that people hate about these 
heel tactics in New Japan, and let's throw it all into this one match. The referee went down, of course. Then you have all the people running into the matches. This is what I hated about the Sonata and Naito matches. Not the Sonata and Naito. This is what I hate about the evil Naito matches. That every match had the same outcome where you had LIJ come out and Bullet Club come out. And it's like, why does this need to be the end of every fucking match? And this is exactly like it was laid out, where people just came out. It wasn't all the factions, but it was Doki and Ghetto, and it was just this... Jato. It was just this exchange of the sameness. And it was like, I don't get it. Why are we still hanging on to this? And then, we're already building up to this match. This long-ass fucking match that's never going to end. And how do they end it out? They take what was a dog shit match. And then, they piss on the dog shit match. So then... This is the topper. So then... When Taichi finally gets control of the glove after like three minutes of trying to get control of it and losing it and getting control and losing it, he gets the glove and the referee wakes up. And Taichi clocks Tomata. Now, the first 10 seconds is like, I'm going to hit you. Tomata's like, No, 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 no. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you. No, 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 no. Please, please, please. Obviously, Tomatonga is waiting for the referee to wake up. He hits Tomatonga. Referee sees it and he goes for the bell. The referee calls for the DQ. The same referees in Japan that are notorious for never fucking disqualifying people, they finally call for the bell. After being yanked and thrown and kicked and chopped all over the damn ring by both of these heel tag teams, they decide to throw the match out. I don't care who was in the ring. I don't care what the match was. Do not give me a 30-minute match. And end on a DQ. That was a colossal waste of my time. It could have been a good match. I would have been even more pissed if it was a good match. Because you wasted my time. I felt like I wasted my fucking time watching this match. Not only was the finish trash. But the match was pro was it wasn't probably. The match was trash. The length was trash. Everything. I, I did not like this match. This match is a 1 out of 10. Probably one of the lowest rated matches I've ever given a New Japan match. I would never recommend this match. I would not even go back to watch this match again. Just the fact that we sat here for 30 minutes through this boring and very confusing match. And then we went to a non-finish. I hated it. Did not like it at all. So, mm. I wanted to do a new segment in these reviews that I call Caged Animal Comments. Which is where I go to cagematch.net and I find a review that a fan left for the match. And I found one review that I just laughed my ass off of because I'm almost certain that Jim Cornette himself left this comment on this match. And here's what it reads. This comes from Mac7742. And he says, I had to pause the video. I was laughing so hard when Marty finally woke up from his 15 minute nap just in time to nag and whine at Taichi for using his stupid f Iron Fingers gimmick and Taichi immediately shoulder checks him into the corner and he goes back to sleep for another hour. I wouldn't even give a shit if they worked so hard that he died in the ring. F the Iron Fingers, f G.O.D., f Taichi, f Zach, f Jado, f the Bullet Club, f Mario Sami, f this match, f this show, f Ghetto, f New Japan Pro Wrestling, absolute like TNA, Jared Russo dog, shit, wasting my f time. Go one f moment without doing. The ref gets yanked out of the ring mid count spot. I f dare you. I hate that spot with such a f passion. And then the f punchline of it all. I've watched all 30 minutes or maybe six hours of this goddamn match and it ends in a f qualification. F you. What a waste of my f life. Negative stars. Minimum I go. Negative two or negative three. Well, he obviously didn't like the match too much. <laughs> I, if I ever got that angry at a match, I would probably just stop watching wrestling. Like, I sometimes come on here and I rant about stuff I don't like, which we all do at some point. But I would never, ever get that angry that I am just yelling explicitives throughout the entire goddamn thing. Like, I know I curse a lot, but holy shit, dude. Calm down. Let's move on to the main event of the evening. Hiromu Takahashi versus show for the iwgp junior heavyweight championship now mind you we just got off of this absurdly lengthy match so how does new japan follow this up well they follow up with an even longer match now this match was actually good i would not at all say this was anywhere close to the 
whatever that was in the last half of the match, uh, the last match. This just did not need to be 35 minutes. Especially considering this is a junior heavyweight championship match. I understand it's the main event of the show. If you want to go the length, you want to go the nine yards, it's New Japan Pro Wrestling. I know how this works. Every main event has to go bare minimum for 25 minutes. I know that. I get it. I get it. But Hiromu Takahashi and Sho, they're high-speed wrestlers. They're junior heavyweights. And yes, we did see some high-flying in this match. We saw some high-speed in this match. But 35 minutes? Really? Like, I, 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 I can't... And I, I think I saw someone online. This is the longest junior heavyweight championship match in history. And... It felt like it. It felt like it. New Japan has a really, really bad habit of thinking that longer is better, and that's just not the case. You could have easily shaved 10 minutes off this match, and I would have still got the exact same point you were going for the initial time. There was no amount of spots, no amount of uh, hard-hitting nature of this match that needed to go that long. And I, I hate to hearken on the fact that it's the length that kills it, but this match could have easily easily been an eight and a half out of ten in my opinion if it was 10 minutes long but the fact that it went that long after just having a match go 29 minutes because take the entrances out of both these matches combined total these matches were almost an hour long which is ridiculous it it the last match ru almost basically ruined the first match that's how i could put it i was so insulted by the first match going into this match i honestly almost checked out but it was really getting the good and really getting good and then it just kept going and i'm like well i kind of i just started checking twitter and i felt like i was really doing disservice to harumu and show you guys know i love them both but <sighs> couldn't even like i said i thought it was a really good match uh harumu takashi did retain the iwgp junior heavyweight championship with the dynamite plunge for the pin so he is still your junior heavyweight champion don't know who's next in line. Maybe it's Bushi, considering he'd just be Master Wado. Maybe. But, like I said, this match should have been 10 minutes shorter. Overall, this show was not worth your time. I thought it was the worst show so far of the New Beginning series. And hopefully, tomorrow's show makes up for it. But, I don't know if I'm too sure about that. But, that was your New Beginning in Hiroshima Night 1 review. What did you guys think? Comment down below. Let your boy know. Make sure you check out my socials right here. I love you guys always, and I will see you all later. Peace.